Hi everyone and welcome to the next video on the Tal Memorial. Today was round 8 and saw only one win to Magnus Carlsen, which was good to see seeing as he'd had 7 consecutive draws in the tournament so far. Apparently he got a fever early in the tournament and it's been affecting his play, which is unfortunate because everyone was expecting some fireworks after his amazing performance in Nanyang last month, where he won with 8 out of 10 and a tournament rating of over 3000 in ELO. This was a spectacular, spectacular if not flawless win against the ex-FIDE world champion Roslan Ponomaryov. Carlsen opened with e4, which was a surprise in itself, because he's played d4 in most of his games recently. Ponomaryov gladly went into a Sicilian with c5, and after the book line, knight f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6, the game has gone into the notorious Nidorf variation which was, as I'm sure you all know, a favourite of both Bobby Fischer and Garry Kasparov. It leads to very sharp play, and this game is a good example of the kind of positions it can create. Play continued with one of the book lines, bishop e3 and e6, and black gains the flexible Scheveningen pawn structure and a so-called small centre small center with pawns on e6 and d6. Magnus continued with f3, which just stops knight g4, hasting the bishop at e3, and defends the pawn on e4, which is a target in many lines of the Neudorf, and it also prepares to push the kingside pawns and castle queenside. Ponomaryov gained space on the queenside immediately with b5, and now came some standard development with queen d2, knight bd7, g4 and h6 which is prophylaxis against g5 but Ponomaryov will re regret this move later. Magnus castle queenside and then came knight e5 which was the last book move because now came queen e1 which is a deep move. From e1 the queen has a lot of potential on the king side although and although there's a lot of material in the way, she's eyeing the king here on e8. And also this move unmasks the rook so that it can eye the black queen on d8 for potential tactics later, something Ponomaryov immediately took action against with queen c7. And now Magnus pushed further on the king side with h4, perhaps also aiming to provoke black's next move which was b4, and this weakens c4 and allows Magnus to set up an attack on the e6 square by rerouting his knight to f4. Many people commenting on this game were of the opinion that this whole line was home preparation, perhaps with the assistance of Kasparov, his new coach, and with the game that followed it's easy to agree. He now started out the knight manoeuvre with knight c e2, and after the strongest and probably expected move knight c4, attacking this bishop which is now undefended, he played knight f4, which looks like a novice's mistake, but of course Magnus is no, no novice, and naturally Fritz didn't like this, preferring instead bishop f2, where after e5, knight f5, and g6, the position is equal. And the reason I say, um, you know, like a novice's mistake is because e5 now apparently wins a knight. Um, but of course, Magnus has accounted for that in his preparation. Ponomaryov played knight takes e3, which gains the bishop pair at the cost of three tempi, as he's moved his knight four times to capture a piece that's only moved once. Although, objectively speaking, black is slightly better after um, queen takes e3 and certainly better than if Ponomaryov had tried to fork the knights let's have a look at that quickly if e5 here now comes knight d5 knight takes d5 e takes d5 e takes d4 bishop takes d4 with check from the queen, and now we see one of the ideas behind queen e1, all that material has suddenly evaporated, 
with those exchanges and now white can gain ob objective equality after king d7 and queen takes b4 with two pawns and some positional advantage for the knight although it's unclear what the best way to continue would be so back to the game continuation anyway was um queen takes e3 after knight takes e3 queen takes e3 and then came queen b6 from Ponomaryov. Again, he didn't fork the knights here, perhaps seeing that it gave him no advantage. Let's have another look now. If e5, then again knight d5. Knight takes d5 is best play. And after e takes d5, he can't take the knight anyway because the queen is pinning the e-pawn. Fritz gives the move bishop b7 and an equal evaluation here. But, you know, perhaps... Kasparov and Carlsen and either of these variations where black forks the knights have figured out a constructive plan that Fritz can't recognize and that gives white some advantage in the long run um, you know they could have a plan here to win a pawn or something like that in 20 moves time and you know winning a pawn at this level basically means winning the game um, so we'll never know maybe we'll find out in a, another match that Carlsen plays in this line in the future to get back to the game continuation anyway <coughs> excuse me after queen b6 came bishop c4 which is only possible because b4 was provoked earlier uh, weakening c4 and now came queen c5 from Ponomaryov which is moving his queen for the third time and surely not a good thing in the opening it's one of the basic principles of opening play is to not move any piece if you can avoid it more than once and especially not your queen which generally speaking you should keep back in the opening um, and this move you know it does come with tempo because the bishop is attacked and it may even be provocative play because it's begging white to make a sacrificial attack because of uh, black's lack of development and Magnus gladly obliged in this with queen b3 and this at the same time prevents black from playing e5 again to fork the knights because bishop takes f7 is possible which would give white a huge advantage let's have a look if uh, e5 now um, here we are then bishop takes f7 is completely winning for white is over six pawns ahead Black's in check now and he has to move. The best move is king e7, but now comes knight g6 check, king d8, and knight e6 check, forking the queen. So it forces bishop takes e6. Now bishop takes e6, which keeps the initiative due to the threat on this rook here at h8. So rook h7, and now knight takes f8, rook h8, knight g6, etc. is totally winning for white in any case so he's obviously not going to go for that continuation um, okay so d5 is what Ponomaryov did play and presumably he was feeling the pressure because this was a blunder it's easy to understand that he wanted to blunt the queen bishop battery that's you know pounding down here on f7 um, but his calculation was flawed. The unusual looking rook a7 was the correct defense but white still gets a strong attack after the powerful bishop takes e6 sacrifice. After say for example f takes e6, g5, h takes g5 and knight f takes e6. Uh, best play, yeah, no that's it and that's uh, that's a strong attack for white for a minimal material investment you know it's a powerful knight at e6 it's uh, attacking the queen if bishop takes and the other knight comes in and there's strong d file pressure h file pressure and lots of dynamics as compensation for the invested material positionally white's better here despite being down in material um, okay yeah but d5 anyway from Ponomaryov and this was a mistake after e takes d5 his idea was to play the intermezzo bishop d6 but white has a good advantage now in every continuation okay i'll have to do this video in a couple of parts and i'll see you in the part one